Well, we were meant to be having a band in today, unfortunately, but they, we had to postpone because we couldn't get hold of a, a technician to help with the sound, but they are coming back. And in the place of that, we have somebody... Well, I'll let you introduce yourself. It's far easier. Hello. Uh, my name is Dave Rotorg. I'm uh, the bass player for Blue Balls and also um, the new bass player for Winter Friends. With Winter Friends. Sorry, yes. we've had Winter Friends here. How long have you been with Winter Friends? Uh, I'm relatively new. I've only been with them for, uh, I think, six weeks or so. Six? Yeah. Great. What's it about bass that you like? Um, I've been a fan of bass players uh, since I was about three. Paul McCartney's my uh, my biggest bass hero. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I wore out the Beatles records yeah. uh, of my mother's uh, when I was a little tacker. So, yeah. yeah. He plays some fantastic riffs. He really does. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, actually, like myself, I, I was a guitarist for, uh, for a long yes. time. Um, yeah. And he played guitar first up too. So. Yes, he did, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. kindred spirit, I suppose. <laughs> wow, that's lucky. Did you see him when he was here in Melbourne? Uh, not exactly. Um, he played uh, Amy Park that's in, right. in Melbourne. Yes. Um, and uh, adjacent to that is um, Olympic Park. Yes. And I was there uh, with some friends watching um, AFLW oh, uh, training because right. um, yeah. I'm a big yes. fan of AFLW. Yes. And... Um, yeah, we could hear him actually yeah. uh, doing the sound checks and things like that, and, <laughs> and you know, talking to his crew and yeah. saying, you know, yeah. he needs some adjustments and things like that. Oh, mm. it was fantastic. Yeah, I saw it, and the only thing that worries me about um, Amy Park is because it's open. A lot of the sound seemed to be going up instead of forward to the audience. Right. I don't think the sound was as good as it should have been. Okay. Well, it sounded great from Olympic Park, that's for oh, sure. Well, I was in the wrong place, there, wasn't <laughs> I? You know, I'd bloody hell, I'd pay, yeah. what, 300 and something for the wrong place, uh, wouldn't exactly. I? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> pay a, a grand total of zero dollars <laughs> yeah. and much of AFLW as well. Yeah. All right, the Blue Balls. Now, you've just replaced a bass player. Yeah. Um, Mick Jones uh, was his name, and... and um, uh, he's, he was off um, touring Vietnam uh, just recently, so mm. he was, uh, he's obviously uh, doing pretty well for himself. And um, I came in, uh, I think it was around sort of October 2017. Yeah. Um, yeah, to, to pick up the, the, uh, the role. Good. And how, how do you do, to describe yourself? How do you define yourself as a band? What are you? Um, we're a, a heavy blues um, outfit, hence the name Blue Balls. Which uh, yeah, obviously yeah. has uh, dual connotations, yeah. but we won't <laughs> yes. talk about that. Um, uh, yeah, so um, we're a three-piece of power trio, so um, which gives me a lot of scope for um, improvisation and things like that, um, which is kind of very different to um, to the Winter Friends, where it's it's really about yes. the vocals. Of course. How much improvisation do you do? I mean, if you're going well on stage and you decide to extend a number or something. Do you do a lot of improvisation then? Yeah, well, that's sort of up to um, Justin, our lead guitarist. Yeah. He's also the vocalist for the band, so he, mm -hmm. he kind of um, directs it a little bit then. But, um, yeah, we we basically take our cues from him and, and um, uh, any of our numbers can expand um, whenever we like it. So. Oh, it's good, it really is. It's good to have that freedom as well. Yeah. All right, now if we go through this, we've got Blue Bulls Blues. Yes. Bob Hope. Yep. You know, and Hound Dog. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is we'll start off with um, Blue Ball Blues, I think. Why yeah, not? We'll, we'll do it as it is. And as you've just explained... Um, Dave is not actually in this band. When no, it was recorded. That was recorded um, well before I, I joined the band. So uh, mix uh, bass playing is is what you'll hear. So right, we are coming. Da 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 da. 
We are coming, don't worry, it's just playing around at the moment. Technical difficulties, Technical we'll be back in one second. Oh, that's just <laughs> typical. Um, I'll come back to it in a minute. No, it doesn't want to play at the moment. All okay. right, we'll talk about that in a minute. These, the, the titles of these, um, obviously you didn't write these, but who wrote these numbers? Uh, Justin is responsible for most of the songwriting. Yeah. Um, uh, the track you know is actually a, a Mick Jones number. Um, uh, yeah, so um, so Justin's um, basically uh, does the majority, well, did the majority of the songwriting. Um, he's uh, it's become a lot more collaborative now. In what way? Um, well, uh, basically because I I tend to. To put my foot down and and um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, we Justin and I work really well together. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a, a seamless compositional um, tag team that we have. All right, um, I will get to this CD in a minute. I'm just trying to still sort it out. So what's it like? Your dad. <laughs> no. What's it like being in a a band of sort of you know heavy blues rock? I mean, I know what blues is. I know what rock is, and I've heard blues rock bands. How? Why did you choose that genre? What do you like about it? Um, that's a good question. Um, I've always liked uh, uh, rock music. Um, since I was a child, um, uh, one of my favourite bands was uh, was Kiss, actually, um, as well as the Beatles. So yeah, um, had uh, quite a diverse um, uh, upbringing as far as music goes. Um, I suppose in that in that sense, uh, yeah. Um, it, heavy blues has always been um, something that I've been interested in like uh, Led Zeppelin and and uh, the like uh, Deep Purple 70s music I'm a big fan of 70s uh, 60s and 70s music but um, yeah Deep, Deep Purple with Ian Gillan or with yes yeah alright yes definitely yeah good <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a slap round the face otherwise <laughs> uh, although the track Burn yes. is yes. still one of my favourite Deep yes. Purple um, yes. tracks okay yeah. yes yeah no and John Lord used to be fantastic on the organ. He was a tremendous player, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Was brilliant. Yeah. he's. Yeah. He, I think he changed... Um, well, he and uh, Keith Emerson are, are responsible for changing the way the people regarded the organ. Mm. Um, uh, like uh, People like James Hetfield from Metallica um, said that his um, uh, if he was going to choose someone to play organ or yep. keyboards, it would be John Lord. So that's telling you something. Wow, yes. Okay, I think I fixed it. Let's have a go. Okay. Let's... It. There we go. There, good. Oh, 
If that didn't make you move, then I think you need an enema or something. Cause, oh, just, wow, that is really good. Why do you think that is just a, a trio? Yes, correct. Right. Whoops, I haven't put your microphone on, sorry. When you think it's just a, a trio, that's an amazing sound you get there. How often do you practice? Uh, we try and practice every, um, every Sunday mm-hmm. um, around at, at Justin's place, you know, yeah. the guitarist's place. Um, yeah. Sometimes that doesn't work out, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's really good. Uh, yeah, I love that. I don't know what you can do it. It's a very full sound, isn't it? It is. It's very driving. Yes. It really is. Yeah, Justin's um, really, really good at creating original um, riff-based music. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of uh, bands that, um, that do sort of chord-based yes. uh, progressions and things yeah. like that. For example, the Winter Friends. Yes. Um, uh, thankfully, with um, with Winter Friends, Justin's in in the band, so yes. it's becoming much more of a, yes. a riff based yeah. um, thing over, over the top of uh, chords, yeah. which um, gives you a bit more of balance. Of course. Now, with the Winter Friends, you said you've got a gig coming up with them soon. Was it? That's right. Yeah. Uh, we're playing the Saint Hotel in St Kilda mm-hmm. um, this Thursday. Um, with uh, the Misha Bear Band, which I believe you've had uh, here. Yes, yeah, she's been here. But you were saying she's got a new band, or you're having to back her because her band of all yeah um, vanished. Well, her her bass player uh, decided well um, had to uh, go back to England because mm. his visa ran out. Um, unfortunately, Alex, very yeah. very very good bass player. I was yeah, um, beautiful bass he had to yeah, oh. wonderful yeah. Um, so uh, he's been sadly missed, but um, Richard, who is uh, Misha's drummer, yeah. um, is still in the band, oh. and um, yeah, uh, Justin and I yeah. uh, took over um, the the other two roles that were still vacant. Oh, great! So, so how do you balance what you do with the, the Winter Friends and Blue Balls? Because you've got two completely different styles there. Yeah, um, uh, to be honest with you, um, it's really fun to have those uh, different styles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, see, I, I like uh, when musicians listen to each other. Yes. Right? Um, in Blue Balls, all three of us listen to, um, to what we, we do when we play, and therefore we, we, we can improvise and... and um, feel when things are uh, like guitar solos are uh, yeah. um, finishing up and all that sort of mm. stuff. Um, but with the Winter Friends, it's a little bit more conservative. You do the um, play um, a very basic, uh, basic chords and basic, you know, basic bass riffs and things yeah. like that. That that um, that. It, but there's a lot of subtleties there that um, that you can place in um, 
I'm not really expressing myself too well at the moment, but um, <laughs> there's there's basically two different styles yeah. of um, of bass playing there, and both of them have their uh, their pros and cons, mm. I suppose. Um, well, both have their pros, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, the only thing is um, the time constraints. Just being able to um, to navigate rehearsals and things like that from for two different bands. Yeah. Well, in my case, three. Yeah. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What um, drew you into music? Um, oh, geez, my mother had uh, Beatles records, um, which I uh, wore out. Um, when I was a little tacker, when I was about three, so um, as I was saying, Paul McCartney was a big, um, big influence yeah. on my playing. Um, same with the uh, the the Beach Boys. Um, yeah, just anything that made my, uh, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up when I was mm-hmm. a, as a kid. What what is it about that era that you like? I mean, we have so many musos come in here. Some some are only seventeen years old and say, "Oh, the Beatles, the Beatles, or the Beach Boys, or Led Zeppelin." I mean, what is it about that era? Um, well, I think the amount of experimentation um, in the seventies. Uh, I'm also a big fan of, of prog rock, mm. so um, yeah. like the band Yes, oh, were right, a, yes. a massive. Yes thing yeah. for me Chris Grier is just amazing um, that's the original Steve yes Howe. Steve Howe yes yeah, yeah exactly yes. <laughs> not the, the 80s no. Owner, no. owner of Lonely Heart stuff <laughs> no. which, is, which is good in its yes. own right but yeah, um, yeah. yeah um, the original 70s version mm. was uh, yeah just fantastic um, so yeah the experimentation that went on in the 60s and 70s and how um, I suppose uh, not naive but how um, developmental it was in the 60s a lot of um, music that you hear nowadays or you know um, all came from from what um, the songwriting was like in back then I mean um, arrangement wise yeah, yeah a bab cab or a cab mm. um, first chorus yeah. first chorus bridge mm chorus out yep. um, sort of songwriting pop songwriting all came from there so mm. um, yeah I think it's also to do with the fact that <clears throat> in that era they didn't have all the extra pedals and boards that we have nowadays for people to play with so what you heard is literally what they were playing yeah exactly um, I mean, there was still quite a lot of experimentation. Oh done yes, in it gradually studio. built up into that. But to start yeah. off with, they, they they were just the band playing, and they did all these wonderful things, and they with their guitars, and then it built up from there. Yeah, and even the um, the recording techniques and things like that that they used, um, having limits limits <laughs> with, uh, with the amount of mics and and um, and the the desks uh, back then were were quite. Um, uh, Carry on. <laughs> I'm sit- he's sitting there watching me. With this chair that keeps keeps collapsing. You know, I'm like a dwarf. <laughs> um, S- Snow White will walk in. Yeah. in a minute. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, you're right. The, um, the 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 lack of of technology uh, meant that the creativity had to be um, yes. higher. Much higher, yes, definitely. Yeah, and it and it does um, does come through with the records. All right, the second one, Bob Hope. What can you tell me about this one? Uh, this is actually a, a really big crowd favourite. Um, it's um, yeah, I, I still I don't really understand why, but it, it's very um, it's got that very laid back sort of groove to it. And, um, which is, uh, yeah, as I say, uh, very popular um, mm. when we play it live. Do you know why it was named after Bob Hope? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, it, uh, Bob Hope is, well, for us, is um, rhyming slang for mm. um, some very... All right. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> why not? Yes. <laughs> um, OK, 
Okay, well, we'll, we'll probably, probably uh, one of the reasons why it's so popular. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go into this now. Yeah. You're listening to Uncut and Unsigned. I'm Tony. I'm talking to Dave from Blue Balls, from Winter Friends as well. And we're going to play a track called Blue Balls. Uh, Bob Hope. Bob Hope. <laughs> All right, so naming the band now, yes? Okay. Mm.
Oh, some fantastic guitar playing there. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And um, and Justin actually uh, celebrated his birthday on, on the weekend. Did he? On Sunday, yeah. Oh. Nice young 49 years old. Oh. Yes. I was going to say, perhaps he's old enough to go to pubs now. <laughs> okay, yeah. So. <laughs> no, that's beautiful playing that. Yeah, absolutely well done. Um, what was the first album or single or vinyl or cassette or, if you remember them, cartridges that you ever bought? That I bought? Um, uh I can't remember whether it was either um, ESP by the the Bee Gees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, (laughs) I liked one or two songs from the album and I thought the rest would be the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyway. um, Or uh, Crazy Nights by Kiss. Kiss. Yeah. Right. Right. You mentioned Kiss before, yes. What was it about the original Kiss that you liked? Um, Well... I was obviously fascinated by the uh, the visual aspect um, yes, okay. of them back yes. in the seventies, yeah. um, uh, especially Gene Simmons's yeah. um, devil <laughs> look. Boy, that was, yeah, that was amazing. Uh, my my parents actually bought me um, one of those cardboard. Um, I don't know what you you call them, but they um, they have little. Um, you could move the cardboard uh, arms and legs and things like that oh, around. Oh, yes. Um, I know what you mean. Yes. There was one of, of Gene yeah. Simmons that I, I had on the oh, back of my door. Yeah. So uh, that was, yeah, <laughs> that was just amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, the music was um, fantastic as well. Um, unbelievably, they were also influenced by uh, the Beatles. Mm. Um, they they loved Paul McCartney stuff and... and um, they, a lot of their, their songs, the early work was uh, rearrangement, rearrangements of, of Beatles songs, mm. really. Um, they wholeheartedly admitted um, <laughs> taking what, they, uh, what the Beatles had done and, yeah. and kind of remixing it, rearranging. Oh, that's interesting. Because yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of another band around that time, uh, The Sweet, who started yes. off doing teeny bop stuff. music, but then... They really went, went far. They were really good in the end. Yeah. I used to love them. Oh. Yeah. All right. So we've done a, a bit about the CD or whatever it was you first bought. What about the first gig you ever went to? Um, okay. First proper gig that I ever went to mm-hmm. was at uh, Festival Hall. Um, and it was to see Iron Maiden. So again, yeah. uh, showing my my yes. rock um, <laughs> elements. Uh, mm. You know, uh, I think I was about fourteen or fifteen at the time. Yeah. And um, yeah, they are just an amazing live act. Amazing live act. Mm. Um, I I actually I thought um, after seeing them the first time that. Um, uh, my experience was kind of a little bit biased because it was the first time I ever saw yeah. any band. Um, but then I went and saw them for a second time about oh, 10, 15 years later um, when they came back and, and played Rod Laver. Yeah. And it was equally as good. So I just went, ooh, okay. Yeah. They are a very, very, very li- good live band. Very good. Very tight. Uh, tight and... and um, they really understand the visual aspect of, of mm. life. Yeah. You, know, you, you have to put on a show, mm. um, which I think is a, a very important. Yeah, there's nothing worse than just four guys standing there, all three. Yeah, so I know what you mean. So, yeah. mm. If we went to your house now, mm-hmm. or even into your car, what would we find musically? Uh, in my house, you'd find um, a whole heap of, of uh, CDs from um, Carol King's Tapestry right through to oh, wow. um, to yeah um, Return to Forever mm. um, and anything in between. So I, I have a quite a, a varied taste in music, um, and yeah, although I haven't actually bought a CD. 
Oh, I haven't bought a CD in, in decades, so I really should uh, go back to JB Hi-Fi and then start <laughs> investing again. Yes, especially since some of the older ones are so much cheaper these days. Well, though, true, it? true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's it about Carol King that you like? Um, I suppose there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of nostalgia as well. Mm. I was born in 1975, mm. and I remember music from when I was about two or three. Yeah. So, um, because it, it mm. was just such a, a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, I think that's you know mm. the reason why I became a musician was because of um, yeah. the the music that I heard. Um, so yeah, um, anything that uh, that my mum, in particular was interested in uh, during those formative years for yeah. me um, Carol King George Benson mm. um, yeah the Beatles the Beach Boys yeah. uh, Santana mm. um, any of that sort of stuff uh, really still yeah um, you know gets a, the hairs on the back of the, the neck going so yeah even today that's fantastic did you see Carol King at Hyde Park the video no I haven't actually Oh, it's really worthwhile seeing. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll look out for it. Yeah, and definitely. Go to YouTube and yes, because it's you wouldn't believe how old she is and how she sounds the same as she used to. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. All right, going to the next track here. You know, mm -hmm. what's the background to this one? Um, to be honest, I, this is the one that I know the least about. Right. Um, uh, we don't play it that much in our in our sets um, these days. Mm. Um, yeah, because um, we we just have too many new things to play. So, um, but uh, yeah, as I say, uh, this is the the Mick Jones, the the pre yeah. previous bass players um, work. So, yeah, um, uh, again, uh, a really good one live. Um, a lot of people enjoyed it, so mm. I, hence the reason why it's on the EP. Oh, wow, great. We'll go with this. The time now is coming up to 10 past 12. It's 10 past the hour, and you're on 3MDR. Thank you. That's <laughs> even better, isn't it? Yeah. I'll change seats. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's gone on to the. This is amazing, isn't it? You... Uh, technology, eh? That's all right, yes.
Okay, there we had a great number there, you know, from Blue Balls. In the bands you've been in, Dave, mm-hmm. every t- every band has a, a good time and a bad time. And I mean, the good times, well, self-explanatory. Yeah. But the bad times, something wrong with the audience, something goes wrong with the equipment, or mm. somebody doesn't turn up, or something unusual happens. Can you give an example of both of those? Um, okay, so one of the bad times that I've had uh, where smoke was coming out of my ears um, was uh, we, I was in a cover band. We, we were playing just a sort of an open mic yeah. um, type venue and um, there was no sound person on the board. We were basically having to do everything ourselves. We got it all set up perfectly. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, someone who um, shall re- remain nameless... Yeah. But um, uh, ironically, was hard of hearing. Um, came over and and said, "Oh, I know what the problem is. And all the gains are turned down," and decided to switch everything, all the oh, the, um, the, no. the signal up. And we got feedback galore oh. on every instrument, and it was just like we had everything set up perfectly. You know, yeah. it's like we're doing this um, sort of a showcase type uh, type thing for yeah. the open mic and yeah. and. We look like idiots. So yeah, um, that was that was probably the the, uh, yes. the worst time. Yeah, um, the best time. Oh, it's got to be. Um, I was. Uh, we were fortunate enough to um, to get a gig at a, um, a festival over in Germany, hmm. um, supporting the wonderful, extraordinary, um, fantastic. Superlative, um, Jethro Tull. Oh, yes. Sorry to name drop, yes. but um, they are just a, an amazing band, mm. and and um, yeah, just the the experience of of touring it was the first time I've been overseas. It was the first time I'd, I'd um, uh, toured, um, yeah, and to do that with uh, with Tull was mm. just uh, extraordinary. Oh, fantastic! Did you go to the Reaper Barn? Uh, no, we no. didn't go um, there, <laughs> um, but we were on the Rhine, and it was amazing. Um, there was there was a winding road that went past 
uh, went adjacent with the, the Rhine yeah. and it was kind of every five seconds you'd, you'd um, look out, out the window and say, oh, castle. Yeah. <laughs> castle. Yes. Oh, yes. got the castle. Yeah. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful area. Mm. Right, this, this final one now, Hound Dog. Yes. Um, that is uh, the only cover that's on this, in this CD. Um, it's our version of uh, the Elvis Presley, Presley original. Um, yeah, so... Because um, it was a woman who did it originally, wasn't there? Oh, okay. I didn't I did yes. know that. A blues lady back in the 30s, 40s, yes. Right. Yeah. African-American? Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. Much slower, but she... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Elvis sounding like one we're going to be playing now then. All right. The time well, now is just gone quarter past 12. You listen to Uncut and Unsigned with Tony and Dave. Oh. And it has decided to stop again. We'll be back to it. Go. There we go. You ain't nothing but a hell dog, cried all the time. You ain't nothing but a hell dog, cried all the time. Oh, you ain't never go to Reverend and you ain't no friend of mine. Some said you was high class, that was just a lie. Some said you was high class, that was just a lie. Oh, you ain't never go to Reverend and you ain't no friend of mine. very interesting that <laughs> love the reggae bit I'm scarred bit. yeah I, I, I myself was sorry I must admit that with reggae scar dub dance hall oh what's the other one dub I get confused yeah. between all of them I can't do you know the difference between them all uh, not very well no, no. <laughs> oh, right, good somebody who same as me thank god I'm not alone in this world yeah that's great 
All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming in today. It's been really good talking to you and all the yeah. best with the um, the gig and the new album that's coming up. And you must come back again and have a chat. It's purely by chance, as we know, that you came in today, which is very lucky, very yeah. fortunate, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for, for having me. And, and um, yeah, hopefully the um, the guys from the, the Winter Friends and yeah. and uh, our supporters all can get behind 3MDR and mm. and, um, and get on the, uh, the sponsorship wagon. Yeah, that'll be great. That's very much appreciated. Uh, any more gigs you want to announce? You've announced the one at the Saint. Anything else coming up? Well, uh, Blue Balls actually have um, a headlining gig on the 11th of um, what are we, 11th of April, mm-hmm. which is a Thursday night again at the Saint, um, supporting Winter Friends, who are the house band at the Saint. Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be doing that. Um, as I was saying to Tony, we're um, are in a writing phase, so um, most of our our time is, is going mm. to be spent uh, developing new songs and, yeah. and getting an album prepared. So, yeah, uh, not so much gigging. All right. Well, all the best with it. And thank uh, you once again. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, we'd love to come back again. Yeah, definitely. All right. So we've been talking today from Blue Balls, who's recently taken over bass playing because the young lad who was with them before went back to Liverpool. Yes. And what a shame. Shame he had to go back. I mean, it's not shame because you've got the job, but I mean, he was very good playing. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go straight into a number now by the Winter Friends. You can just say what this is about. Clock is ticking. Oh, clock is ticking. Um, yes. This is a, a fantastic um, song uh, written by... Um, uh, I think it was written by Andy um, and definitely arranged by, by Steve and one of the, the previous bass players yeah, um, yeah just a, a great song that we'd, uh, we'd love to play All right, I just only just received this the other day so let's go with it let's go with it <laughs> here we go Change. 